Hello, Steve White, Trek by 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, I sort of had a thought while I was watching Picard, and I didn't want to go into it during my review. I sort of thought, I'm just going to do a separate video about it. But, um, I hate to say this, but while I was watching this episode, I had a moment, a pang, a moment where I actually missed Discovery. Why? Because as much as I hate what they did to canon, as much as I hate what they did to the universe and science fiction quality in, in, in general, um, they did an interesting thing where they did really embrace diversity and individuality within the crew. We had a real crew of individuals um, coming together and having this found family and um, embracing emotionalism and sort of seeing that as a strength, not as a weakness, the sort of old military sort of mind, which is what we have sort of today. Um, in our world is very much, you know, the male perspective of not having emotions. Emotions are bad, they should be repressed, and, you know, it's always about might and power and blah, blah, blah. Um, I like that they had shown that by the 25th or 29th or 31st century, or whatever it was as well, that um, we had embraced, you know, our emotions, that, that, we, that the female um, emotionalism and instinct, the mother instinct, the... All the, that side of it was something that was embraced as part of, um, not the command structure, but part of just um, um, operating. And I love they embraced that in the show. And a lot of people said, oh, they're always crying, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're weak. It's weak people who don't know what they're doing, you know, being emotional and projecting emotionalism and so forth. But it was, you know, it was, it was a, a deliberate attempt to actually show that that's part of our humanity and parts that we have to embrace, you know, that helps us to make decisions and be a better crew and a better family and a better, a better, I don't want to say race, but, you know, I, I get what they were doing with that. I, at first I thought it was just immature people writing immature characters, and then I realised, no, they're actually trying to actually show that this is part of, part of command and part of leadership and part of humanity and just, you know, we need to not be afraid of our emotions and actually let them guide us. Um, and, you know, it's kind of Spock's sort of um, journey originally. It's like learning to embrace both logic and emotion, not just sort of doing the traditional male, patriarchal, cold, logical thing. You've also got the human emotional sort of and finding that balance. Um, and I, I miss that in this because I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is so traditional, um, so traditional family. It's like... This whole crew of individuals is being risked just for this little family unit. And it's all very traditional, very cis male. We've got these old white men sitting at a bar, you know, basically, practically with the cigars, while the wife's at home nagging him to come home, and she jokes to bring the bourbon. So it has a little comedic twist, but it was very, very misogynistic, I thought, that, that scene. Very... Um, just really traditional and it's like I, I'm kind of seeing now why the haters were so quick to turn for this show it's not just the good I mean the characters characters are well written well acted the the story itself does seem to be um, a lot better than you know the other couple of seasons in Discovery but I think there's also this underlying sort of return to the sort of patriarchal norms um, I mean we've got two old white males, Picard and Riker, who are legacy characters, we had to have them, but the captain could have been a woman or someone of another race, but we've got another old white man. There are minorities within the crew, but they're small characters that, aside from La Forge's one scene with seven, really don't have anything to do other than be representation on the bridge. Um, and yeah, I'm just finding the couple of things that Discovery got right that they fought for, um, diversity and emotionalism and um, sort of embracing evolution and sort of, sort of, you know, moving past the patriarchy to something that embraces all of humanity, both the female and the male. Um, I feel like they've sort, of pulled, they've sort of pulled that back and they're sort of, it's a bit regressive. The show feels a bit regressive and I honestly had a moment where I was like, this is really traditional. Where, where are the gays and, and the aliens and, and, and the people of colour? It's just old white men with their wives at home nagging them and them ruling the world, uh, being the kings. I'm like, 
yeah, I kind of don't miss that. I kind of got used to not seeing that every week on Discovery and that. So, yeah, in its, in its, in its you know, being cancelled and celebrating it ending, I am finding the few valuable sort of things that it had, the few things it had going for it. For it. And now this show does seem to be descending into Deep Space Nine territory, which was all about war and um, basically saying that the utopian vision that Gene Roddenberry created was just an illusion that needs to be maintained by terrorism and war and darkness and cynicism. And I'm wondering where the show is going to go. I'm a little bit concerned about where the show is going to go. Um, but we're only three episodes in. I don't know. I just sort of want to talk about those couple of things. Let me know what you think. 